name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and as you can see, um, I have wireless technology because on this channel we are constantly trying to improve um, our props, right? as you can see, um, and I'm trying to improve, this is just to prove that I'm not actually, that this is not my real hair. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, look, at the, it's coming, oh, oh yes. Should have been an hairdresser. Right then. Yeah, I should have been, really. So, we are constantly shifting the goalposts. Now, you might be saying, oh, you got wireless headphones. I've had wireless headphones for many years. I just haven't had a, a Bluetooth capability with my computer because it's not a laptop, it's a tower, a real computer, a real boy's computer. And um, it, it never had Bluetooth. And it, it, it finally dawned on me, hang about, I could just get a Bluetooth adapter. So I did. You see, like I say, cutting edge. Any road, this is part nine. Let's just get on with it. Right, so the engine is not warm enough and is revving it. And the reason why you can tell is because the black, the black, the back wheel is turning. Why is it turning? That's all of the oil and friction in the gearbox. So even though it's not in gear, when he revs it, uh, the, the, the stiction and the drag of all the oil in the clutch is actually making the input shaft and therefore the output shaft turn. As soon as the bike warms up, this stops happening. I don't know what he said there, something ginger. Oh, someone's look at that awesome repair. That's not been repaired and crashed at all. But look, you can see the text change. So someone in the last video says, I thought this was about him not putting the bike together properly. Why are we talking about his aesthetic choices of do you like carbon or not? And I said to him, number one, I get to decide Number <laughs> what I talk about. Number two is that we just look at whatever he shows us. Because I haven't pre-watched these... So it's more genuinely like first time thing. And the first time you probably watch this is the first time I'm watching this. So we get to see what we can see and there's a debate and stuff and we talk in the comments and stuff like that. But number three is, again, I can just talk about what I want to talk about. And I'm only given, I, I can only talk about what I'm given. So if I'm given just stuff that isn't mechanical and just cosmetic, then I'm going to broach that subject. I don't know why that's so hard to understand, but some people, <laughs> some people, ah, my aneurysm. Right there, let's have a fucking 10 minute diatribe about throwing boxes. I don't care, it's fine. Like, it, people, and it's because people are whingy little girls, all right? It, it's the modern way now is just to be a little bitch about things. But the fact of the matter is, if I see something him do something stupid, he only gets called a Muppet or an idiot or something like that when he does something stupid. So every video, it's almost like, if I open a video and go, oh, he's done this again, the div... And it's just like, it's because I remember something he's already done before that's stupid. So every single video, it's like, right, starting from scratch, unless there's some, oh yeah, you did that, didn't you? Which is in our faces. If it's not in our faces, then it doesn't matter. And you know, there's a bit of banter and stuff like that. But the weird thing, like, oh, the Brillo pad hair or whatever. You know, it, it it's a laugh. But the other thing is as well is that the people are like, oh my god, he just took the piss out of him because he's ginger. It's like, oh god, oh what a horrible humour. But it's like, you obviously don't work in anywhere where a lot of blokes are. Obviously where you work, it smells of oestrogen and tampon strings. It must do. Because in the real world, everyone can chuck a bit, uh, taking the piss backwards and forwards. If you look in my comments, people take the piss out of me a bit. I'll take the piss out of Ginger. Ginger can take the piss back. It's all fine. 
You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not going to sit there and go, he's such a horrible person, he's the haters. And Ginger is actually really good for this, right? He just has a laugh at it. I don't know how he's taking it really, like if he's just putting a, fate, a front up, or if he's genuinely like, ha, whatever, don't care. And that's cool, that's cool. It, it, it's still a good position to be in, for Ginger's sake. Unlike some legging wearing, leg day skipping bloody cry all going splashes emotions all over youtube and wants praise off everybody and systematically deletes comments but then has snipes back with back there was a comment from rye the other day where someone said to him they said um why did you do this that's a bit of a stupid thing to do don't you think that don't you think you should have done this and then someone says well, he's just trying to... Like, and then Rai replied, saying to the other guy, the second guy, says, oh, yeah, the first guy is clearly an armchair expert who watches someone do a live stream. It's like, why would you automatically assume just because some, someone's said you're doing something stupid that it's anything to do with me? Because you've got to remember, I am the only person who is an... I'm the only person who has a go at anybody, and everybody who says so is a follower of me. Mm, that's that's very narrow-minded if you think that, if you just believe that you're the only... It's like, you've got to remember this, Ryan, and I know we're invading Ginger's videos, but Ryan's got to remember that I didn't know who the, who the hell he was, and it was people in the live streams who says, oh, dude, you've got to watch this tit, it's a tit. So people thought you was a tit beforehand. Same with Ginger, people are like, oh, dude, you've got to see this guy. I can't remember how this started. Someone said that he did something... And I was like, come, come off it, people don't do that. And we watched Ginger and it was hilarious. So I thought, right, we'll go back to the beginning and see, is this just a one-off? It's not a one-off. But another point I do want to make as well is that uh, if you put them washers on this plastic, that paint's going to crack off. Oh, look at that shite job. Like, for instance, a lot of things that we comment about is the shit quality of stuff. Like, you can see all the... Dell painted this. Um... But, yeah, is the fact is there might be young guys watching this going, oh, shit, I would have done that. And I give explanations of why you wouldn't do that. And I also try, as best as I can with what we've got in front of us, explain how you'd not want to do that, how to go around not doing that, or a good way of doing it, or blah, 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 blah. And people do in the comments as well. That's the beautiful thing of a community. And people say, oh, it's negative and stuff, but... Every single hit, health and safety thing you've ever seen, all medical procedures, any kind of safety device in anything, so seat belts, airbags, these have all been learnt by people doing something wrong. People fucking up, people getting it wrong, mistakes, right? And if we just went, just be happy, just say nice things to people, don't say that's crap. Don't say that needs to be sorted out. Don't say that that isn't good enough. Because that's how most of these things come around. People kept on dying by flying through windscreens. And someone said, do you know what? That's not good enough. We need to do something to stop this. And seatbelts. And it's it's weird because seatbelts are kind of like the unsung hero. How many people haven't died because of a seatbelt? Because even just smashing your head into a windscreen can be enough to kill people. But you've got to remember, if you say this isn't good enough or this is bad, it means you're a nasty asshole. You're not reusing that, are you? Oh, he's just taking the grommets out. All right, cool. No, of course, we just saw it a second ago. It's because I'm gassing about nothing. <laughs> the music is repetitive. Ah, so that bolt was sat on the grommet. I was going to say, cause it, what did he do it before with? Yeah, and don't tighten them things. Like, they don't need to be super tight. You'll just crack stuff.
Welcome back to the channel, guys. We got a windscreen on the ZX-10R and a key component package just arrived so we can finally start reassembling the bike. Let's crack it open, show you guys what it is. If that's a key, then you didn't need that to, to reassemble the bike, did you? Start the bike, yeah. Oh, it's a connector. Oh, look, good lad. And you can buy the connectors and repin them instead of like he has done in the past. Chopping looms to pieces. Don't get me wrong, that sometimes they are knobs to find. Is he taking the radio out? To get to that connector, you've got to be kidding me, right? I understand that, but why did you put all the tubes back on the radiator? This is a bit bizarre. Oh yeah, someone said that he dented the exhaust with an armor. Right, as you can see, here is the broken connector, here's the new connector. They don't look the same. I'm simply them. just swapping the leads over from one side to the other. Essentially how all connectors work is there is a locking mechanism for the leads, this white piece, this white piece which is broken, that secures the leads in place. Once you oh, I see. remove yeah. that, you're able to access that little plastic tab on top right there. Now that that little tab is up, the lead comes right out and I'll swap it into the new connector. Well, there's a lot of different types of connectors. Here's the last lead from the broken connector. That's uh, a pin, but yeah. Bye bye. Good. And into the new connector it goes, right in the spot. Boom. Click, and then push this white tab in to secure the leads. God, he's taking the oil cooler out now. Oh. Where they? Did he just put a washer underneath it? Maybe it's bent. All right, we got that radiator fan situated. It was rubbing on the radiator, just had to bend those metal brackets a little bit. We also got one of those hard... You look like you put a washer on it. This connector's fixed, but I'm a fool and I forgot to order the other side. But that's where this package comes into play. Come again, what? Didn't they give you both ends? That's a bit of a jib. You just saw, it's a used harness from a ZX-10R. Oh, no, no, go! If you've just bought the female, the male, why can't you buy the female from the same place? Are you telling me they just sell one? They're misogynistic bastards, they just sell dicks. <laughs> I think in here as well is that radiator pipe that was bent in the last video. So let's crack open this box, take out that harness, swap out the connectors, and then... Oh, I can't believe he's doing this. And final assembly on the front of the bike. Pinning connectors is is or can be a right knob. I'll give him five point. I'll give him ten points to Gryffindor actually because he's doing one pin at a time, which is the right way to do it.
here's the last pin from the broken connector. Boom. And we have one final spot on the new connector. Let's slide her in. There she goes. Click. Now for the final piece. Just like on that other connector, this white piece is what locks those tabs in place. Right in there. There we go. These two connectors are fixed and ready to plug in. Then over here, we have the OEM Kawasaki shroud that goes right above the head, which protects all the wiring from the front radiator. So let's slap this piece on, which takes care of all the wiring behind the radiator. Wait a minute. Did I see something fishy? What's this damage on the fork? Is that cracked? I don't know if that's a big crack. It's definitely got some scrape damage. And obviously up here is where it scratched the frame. But is that line a crack? And is that a crack? Can't really tell, I have to keep an eye out of that. Because that'd be bad, that's your yoke gone. That's your, that's your, oh, which tree is it? That'll be all three trees, but the lower trees, the bottom trees, the closer to the wheel trees, <laughs> the frame bending trees. Get my mug, we're doing ginger fantastic. Get my mug more in the shot, there we go. And let's crack open a fresh one, a fresh tinny, but my tinny, because I'm a, I'm a non, I'm not a non-alcoholic, I'm just a not very often alcoholic, <laughs> a non-alcoholic. I can't see from it, it's cut out of frame, that's a shame, I'd love to see that, hmm. Whichever one it is, it's damaged and will be nicely hidden by the fairings. What did you just do then? I was looking at the other, the middle tree, the, the lowest trees. Oh, he's drilling that out because he's got it. Yeah. You can just grab that with some mole grips. <laughs> you don't need to get the easy out and start drilling. You risk damaging the threads. Or vice grips to the Americans. Oh my god. I think that was Loctited, that originally. I thought all this loom stuff here was on its own plastic shelf unit or is it I just or is it I just can't see it it looks like he's getting this wrong a lot the manual that you bought you know the manual you bought for two hundred and twenty five dollars maybe look in that the wire routing sections when you do stuff like this are priceless they save you so much time He's got like the poshest track he's on I've ever seen. Right, there's that blue lead here. Do we know where this goes? And are you sure you got these things in the right place? The other thing is as well is that for some reason he's got his uh, front wheel up on the bull, the pit bull stand. But when you're doing all this work on the front, what you always want to be doing is you want to be turning the steering left and right to make sure nothing is binding up. Because you could keep it like this, put all the fairings on, get near to the end, take it off the pit bull um, stand, and then go, oh, it won't turn right without snagging on something. <laughs> or 
the the old classic back in the day was when you turn right, it revs the shit out of it because it's pulling on the throttle cable. <laughs> that kind of jazz. <laughs> Uh, size that, right, this is what annoys me. This is this is an afterthought and bad design. You're trying to make this bike as light and as fast as possible, right? Which is what they're trying to do. And then some retard goes and gives you puts a massive bracket like that on for the horn. The size of that thing. Oh look, look. We can see the crude letters that are on the side of the Akrapovich exhaust. Which a lot of people said in the last video where we did we talked about that, that this is a fake Chinese exhaust. It's not. It is an Akrapovich exhaust. That's how they come. End of. What a massive, massive bracket. Like, if you welded a tab to there on this cooler, it just go on the tab. Or... or this clamp here for the oil fitting, if you made a flange that comes off that, it just seems a bit mental. Or even this bloody protective grill that goes on the front, it just seems a bit mental. It's also twisted by the look of it. Is that where that runs? It just seems like that wire lead. Like, isn't this restrained here somewhere? No. Oh, they have a gorgeous carbon. Ooh. He's got mole grip, vice grips. Mole grips for getting the clamps. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I've never thought about it. If you lock them, then it just holds the band up and you can move it. I've never actually thought about that. I always just wanted to do it by hand. That's worth considering. That sunshine is a different length. That's a totally different pipe, isn't it, that one? It's probably for the other side. We are finally getting all the wiring and coolers in place. This tube is actually brand new from Kawasaki, and the one you're seeing on a bike is a used one, and it doesn't fit up right. So I'm glad I got the new one from Kawasaki. Let's throw it on the bike, put some fluid. But why have you got a new one and you're trying to put the old one on? Seems a bit Twitter. bizarre. The, the, the videos, the internet's been a bit of a dick today. See if she'll fire right up. Why did you even fit that? I just want to have a look. They've even got like a little mark, a little indent on the, or oh, an embossed bit on the tube to line up. That's quite cool. You don't have enough coolant? Are you kidding me? Yeah, so last time I said Asian coolants, right? So the reason why that's a bit... Because I was joking, saying, is it racist? Obviously, it's not racist, but it is a bit... You know, it's like Asian just means those lot. It's like, well, what we're talking with. So we'll look at them. Acura, Honda, Infiniti, Mitsubishi, Lancer, Raider, all that. Nissan, Subaru and Suzuki. They're all Japanese, all right? So, what other Asian vehicles are you talking about? Because you're not talking about Samsung, right? So, what else are you talking about? The Chinese brands? Are you really? Is that where? What well, this is for? Get the fuck out of here! This is bit. It's Japanese. So I don't know why you don't just say for Japanese vehicles or Japanese vehicles. <laughs> I just think it's it's very American. To say it. like because that next to it says European. It's just like. It's a bit of a weird thing. What's the other one say?
Asian, Asian. Is the one that says American. I know. I should have got green, but I already started putting blue in it. Shoot me. Why should you have got green? Oh, because it's Kawasaki. Well, no, you do what it says. It's only the Americans that are doing stupid things with coolants that it even matters. Because <laughs> retarded. All right, let's get her up to temp. Did you charge it? Now for real. See, I didn't see that. Oh, come on. So, is it just, yeah, there it is. It's just the overflow. Well, you just put so much coolant in it, you did. I'm dripping. I'm, I'm overflowing. Ah! All right, let's get that garage open. We got the door open, and it was overflowing there for a second. I think some air bubbles are coming out now. Usually when you do cooling, you leave the cap off. All right, hopefully she starts again. <laughs> Why? Because it four minutes at idle that it charged the battery. <laughs> oh, it did. Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting that, yeah. Maybe you just didn't hit the starter right the first time. Because <laughs> that isn't enough. <laughs> If you had a flat battery that's not enough to crank the engine over, that's not enough. She's at 129, raising fast. Still got plenty of fluid in here. And Dude, you shouldn't have the cap off now. And we'll fill up the reservoir in a minute. Check out this throttle, though. <laughs> saying it do not open when hot <laughs> not if you del <laughs> God, even this kid knows how to change coolant. <laughs> you see, as the engine started to warm up, the wheels moving less. Like before, at idle, it was just turning. Now you can see, look, the engine's idling and the wheel's not turning at all. That's because the engine's up to temp, the oil's up to temperature. See, I do think it's crazy, right? You, you buy a uh, chain guard out of forged carbon. You can't, it's here. You can hardly see it. Look, it's that bit. Is that bit? Keep the plastic one. Why would you waste the money? And people's like, it's up to you what you waste. Blah, blah, blah. I get that. But you got to remember, he's buying these bikes because they're cheap. 
like, like, and he said, oh, I bought these bits on eBay because they're cheaper than the OEM ones. So cheap is a consideration for him. That's just wasted money. amazing the fluid level is full that's good to go sounds like sounds like all bikes no radiator is full got nice and hot that fan turned off oh. dodgy finger the fluid level is <laughs> that's what the priest said full. that's good to go radiator is full got nice and is, is that my internet is that the video it's his video that I think. sounded amazing the fluid level is full that's good to go radiator is full got nice and hot that fan turned on twice right at 200. also i'm curious why the wheel stopped spinning because at the beginning it was spinning a bunch but now it's not this exhaust sounds so good oh i've told you why well the bike runs i did a video about like years ago flawlessly get with the demonstration a kawasaki demonstration Except the temp Everything's working, nothing's wrong. That engine light, I think, is for the O2 sensor that I unplugged. Let's start unboxing these fairings. Slap them on the side of the bike. Hang on, we're on part nine, and he's sticking the fairings on. I think this goes up to part 12 or 13. Now, you see, this is the thing, right? This is crazy. This is all in the same winter. Like he's out of cow for spring. So he's done all of these bikes over winter. Like four bikes, four months. He's like, God, the money. Wow. Still no workbench though. Danger warning. Do not open when hot, even if you're Dell bollocks. Oh. It is, is fire and hot coolant resistant. Hot coolant, that sounds good, isn't it? Oh, it's the breather. It's the TARDIS. That's what that looks like. It's a little breather filter. It's the TARDIS. That, that catches your hopes and dreams, that does. I'd find this bit really tedious. I'd, I, don't, I don't think I'd enjoy it. I'd much rather do wiring than this. You know, just getting the two panels and taking all the old grommets off. Ugh. Ugh. Boring. It's a lot of mole grip action. You want some parallel pliers. You want some parallel grips, Ginger the Great, because they're parallel and they help you bend stuff easy. Do you know what? I bend loads of brackets with parallel grips. Then parallel grips that I've got, the Nipex ones. Oh, they're fantastic. It's a shite job, paint job, that, isn't it? God, that's one hell of a skinny fair in that. Just asking you for it to break it, isn't it? Jesus. <laughs> Not fit. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Do you put them in the wrong order? Oh no. It's almost like you could have used the manual that you bought. Oh, what a bugger. Oh, 
or common sense even now. The right side of the bike is coming along fantastic. It looks so good with that green. We've got the belly fairing and the side fairing plus a few other cowls and then the right side of the bike will be completed. Yeah, that, that paint job's a bit to be done. I'm slipping. I always just sit here and slip slightly. Uh, that belly, the, the, the paint job's a tiny bit to be desired. It's all right, you know. The OEM ones cost a bloody fortune, but... Uh, I can see it coming back off. Oh, drilling up holes in your new paperwork. Just think how many injection molding sets of dyes that they have to have for all these fairings. Jesus Christ. And they won't have one, they'll have like 20 or 30 because they've just got to go pump, 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 pump. They've got to pump all these parts out really quickly. And this is the thing, right? As soon as they do the entire batch run for that year's, you know, they make half a million, just say, oh, whatever, 100,000, 200,000, half a million, whatever. And then they make enough for the spare parts. They then just take the dies out and then put something else because it won't be Kawasaki that do these they'll be they'll probably have someone else's subject contracted but then once they take them out and then you know get the forklift to come and pick up the dies and then take it over and they probably have to return them to Kawasaki but as soon as they've done that it's, it's like that's over that's it All right end of craziness Oh, we're opening holes up again. Now, if he learns his lesson, now you have to open all these holes up. You're op opening these holes up on the bike. You know, you, you slip through and crack, cut something or whatever, you know, anything could happen. So I wonder in, when he does the left-hand side, if he drills all the holes pre, pushes all the bungs and spaces and grommets and stuff in them first then just assemble them or if he goes through the same bollocks and for all these fasteners you don't need to get the OEM ones button heads will do he said but how would I know which ones to get it's like well you've got the old fairings Man, that. Hang about. Yeah, half your carbon's hidden. Look. Man, that green and black combination looks so so good. You have the right side very. I think it's too just. I think it's just too green. It's just block green. There's no nothing breaks it up. You know what I mean? It's just like green with some stickers on it completed except for the tank area and the seat as I'm leaving that off for now. Got a lot more work to do on the left side before I can put the fairings on completely. But man, I am looking forward to it. And hopefully a test drive just around the corner. Plus we have that Brent tuning stage two flash to do on the spike before really opens it up. That's going to be it for tonight guys. We'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Oh, look at them. Oh. Ripple smooth. And then you look at the Kawasaki one on the tank and go, oh, actually, yeah, that's flat, isn't it? <laughs> wow. I think he's running the old, the old rear tyre on it. For I... For am I now seeking approval of man or of God?
or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Some idiot lying through the teeth at 10 minutes past one. I love how there's this scrap pile just developing. <laughs> He'll repair all them. He, now he's got his welder. He'll start welding all this stuff up. No bonus footage. My name is Matt. Welcome back to the Hope Your Med Sense. Bye.